Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff Okiri. You're welcome today to Speak Easy, your favorite program on um, on the web. Actually, we are driving towards achieving that in a way. Very soon, we're going to be having lots of people across the globe who will be watching us, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't that <laughs> hey. I love your optimism. It's lovely, lovely. Definitely, definitely, definitely. definitely. Um, Today, we have an exciting topic, actually. Um, we're going to be talking about more than a mother. More than a mother, you know? Um, you know, we all have mothers, you know? And uh, we know the, imp the, the importance and the role they play in our lives and how they help to navigate our lives and got, got us where we are today. So celebrating mother is something that can never be overemphasized. You know, it is important that we do that on a constant basis. And Tango is coming you know, on the back of um, the is it National Women's Day or is it national? International. international, bigger than international. national. International Women's Day. So it's great. So if that celebration, in fact, I don't know, Father's Day, I don't know when is, when is it? Is it is anybody called up? Because there seems to be a lot of women's celebration or mother celebration. And you know, in America, there's one celebration in here, over here, there's another celebration about women and mother. I don't know which one is what. But anyway, well, it's good to celebrate our mothers anyway. Anyway, so if you're welcome, so you're welcome today to this program and um, just, just a quick ground rules for you today. This is a very confidential space. So nobody sees you, nobody knows you, nobody knows you're here. Um, you know, so just be confident to, to, to give your take. If you want to write in the, in, the, in the chat, just write something in the chat and then we can, if you have a question, and you think we are talking about something that you think you want, you want us to expand on, we can actually, do those expansions by you just commenting in the chat and then we will respond accordingly. Um, also, you know, um, if, you, if you think you have a, a program or a suggestion of a program or you think there's, a, there's, there's something you want us to talk about in future or there's an idea that you have, you can just write to us on um, via speakeasy at the bha.org. That UK speak easy at the bha.org.uk. So once again, my name is Jeff Okiri. I'm the community engagement worker for BHA for Equality, and I work within the I project, which is which is um, which is a project that, is, that, is, that aims towards ending all new cases of HIV within a generation. So that's me. So I will leave it for Chantel to introduce yourself, please. Hi, so I'm Chantel, and I am the hive lead at BHA for Equality. Hi, and I'm Yvonne, and I'm the Women's Support Volunteer at George House Trust. Wow, great, great. Good. Thank you guys for coming today, and um, thank you everyone. Uh, if you're participating, please, please get involved. Um, like I said, more than a mother. Why that topic? So, for me... Um... <laughs> For me, more than a mother, um, I feel sometimes that as women who are mothers, um, we're seen as just that, just one. that's the role, the caregiver, looking after the children, devoting your life to children. But really and truly, we're so much more than a mother. So um, I thought it would be a good title and a good, good discussion as well. Um, and we've got a few different themes that we're gonna explore as well today. Um, around the black woman um, not necessarily who is a mother but you know how she's perceived and um, mm. her role is or should be um, should <laughs> yeah so more than a mother mm. that's the mm. topic and we'll be delving into it more yeah because I think the conversation started when we hit on the phrase the strong black woman um, and it's easy almost to link the two because when you say the strong black woman, you, you assume we're talking about a strong mother. Um, but for me, I wanted to just challenge that and kind of ask or explore. So what does that mean for us now? Because I'm sure there are images out there about who we think we are as strong black women or as mothers. And I think it ties in really interestingly with this whole debate around Megan at the moment and what is going on. And would people see her as a strong black woman? 
um, and whether the notion of who we are is visible mm. and what we are and has it changed over time. Yep, yep, yep. Well, I'm glad that you talked about the, the Megan situation and um, Harry and Megan. We're going to talk about that, but let's look at what is a strong woman because you you, you just alighted the re you know, you know, you just attributed women to being strong. And so what is a strong black woman? Is that a woman that is seen to be aggressive in the outlook or somebody who is, you know, um, a bit feminist in, in, in ideology or someone I, who, <laughs> <laughs> so I, who is a strong black woman? I hate being okay. I'm strong um, I get it a lot and I don't know <laughs> I don't know if it's because they see me as this you know mother that you know devotes themselves to the children or whatnot and okay. whatever however they portray me but I do get you are a strong woman you are a strong black woman and anyone that knows me knows that I hate that term because I feel like it kind of puts puts pressure on you like you've got to be strong, you've got to be hard, you've got to, you know, carry on and go through these battles and stuff and not have a soft side, not be vulnerable. Um, so, yeah, th that's how I see strong as just go, go, go. Robot. So you would prefer not to be called a strong woman? You prefer to just be called a woman? You're, you, you, Don't call you, me a woman, just call me Chantel. <laughs> <laughs> we know your name is Chantel, but you know that, that attribution of a strong woman is usually attributed to people who maybe, you know, were very outgoing and, you know, determined and achieving, you know, in every other endeavors, you know, and to some extent, it might be good, but it also has its own adverse effect as well. So, um, yeah, it, but that's the trouble, because Jeff, when I hear it now, I think it's some kind of, it's like when people say, or, or meet me for the first time, and they go, oh, do you like black music? Bob Marley. They straight straight away and they see me, oh, you must be a strong black woman. Just because I'm black, black, don't <laughs> make me a strong <laughs> like, black woman. No. It's like the two just come together, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I just think it's a cop out and a bounce back when you've got nothing to say or when you want to jump into mm. a stereotype, strong black woman comes into mine. And you, I love the image, right? when we watched the Black Panther of the woman warrior. But I think you gotta be mindful that that is just an image. Uh, and in a sense, it's great because we have had to fight adversity, but historically what is not represented is those of us who fell those of us who found it hard, those of us who drink, those of us who are on drugs, those of us. And in some ways, it's almost like saying, if we don't hit that marker, we have not achieved. Mm -hmm. And so it's the singularity of that title and that concept that worries me, because again, it feeds into images that are unattainable. That woman, let me think of the song how does she go I am every woman I can get up in the morning feed the cat and uh, you know water the chickens cook the goose make medicine boil potato go out into the yard work 900 I'm thinking and we do that because yep. psychologically that's the only positive image that we have of ourselves is of mm -hmm. women carrying everything but the reality is it breaks us and we can't speak about that. So what happens when we become broken or when we are vulnerable or not allowed to be vulnerable? Are Do we you not strong then? Yeah. So that is that song doing us a favor, Jeff? Yeah, yeah. The, the thing the, the thing is, um I, I I was brought up by a single mother. Yeah. And I and I and I watched uh, how even because we lived we we, we lived we grew up in poverty and and she was very determined to provide for us and there were times when things were very difficult she could not you know um she, she, she didn't have the money and um because sometimes when we look up 
strong, determined person. We also don't look at those who will go down the extreme to, uh, to just provide food on the table. And that's what a strong person is. There was a day we didn't have food to eat and then she had to go to the neighbor and say, please, can you give me food? Give me something so I can provide for my kids. But someone to you know, humble themselves to that point of actually asking. I consider that a strong, determined person in order to provide for their kids, for their children. You understand? But the way yeah. the world sees a strong woman today is that woman who has achieved so much. Maybe has a very good job, and maybe drives a very good car. And there's a tendency that arrogance is usually associated with women, individuals of that kind. And that's one. That's where the, the, the struggle is. The public persona of such individuals, you know, looking at them and say, okay. Well, she's very outspoken. She's she's a, she's achieving, but she can be also arrogant. And, and many times you find out that, that even we talk about the Megan situation, is that this is a lady who grew up in America. You know, so you see, Canada, you know, had a bit of you know not a, a, an A-list in terms of um, the movie industry, but she was you know in a movie that was a bit popular at the time, The Suit. And I watched that. I used to be a, I'm, I'm a fan of her. And when she, in fact, when she got when she said she was going to get married to, to um, what was his name? Prince Harry. Harry, I was like, why is she getting married? Uh, because I wanted to see her single. Why was she getting married? What's wrong with Harry? Can he, can, can he look for that woman? And, <laughs> you wanted her to be single and wait for you. She's going to take away her from the television and I won't see her anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Yum. No, <laughs> but but look at it. Let me just climb down on that one. Yeah. This woman has come from poverty. She has worked her way up. I look at her mother as well, who is very dignified in all of the trash that has gone on about Megan's family. Her mother has remained dignified. And she reminds me of the Lawrence lady, Stephen Lawrence's mother, quietly dignified. But again... I feel that that image of us, noble and dignified, we're acceptable then in our Mm -hmm. strength. Because on the other hand, if we go wild and tell you about your what's it not because you've stood on our corn toe or if you're pushing the boundaries with our dignity and our rights, the image of us is hostile and aggressive. And my Mm -hmm. concern about that again is, if it was somebody else, would it be classed as assertive? In a world where there is choice about how you express yourself, why is it okay to go wild, to be mad, to be vulnerable, to be so many different things, to express your humanity in so many different ways? But for me, there is a struggle and a limitation to how many different ways I can express myself. I am not without dignity and I am not without the ability to be humble. But if the only way I can get recognition is to to play this image of always being strong, who stands by me when I break? And, And how many role models are out there that, portray different images because I think when you say strong I can think of Venus and Serena Williams and again it's a certain image how many other images how many quiet women do we have I'm thinking maybe Oprah does strong differently Mm. but what other ways are we allowed to express the phenomenalness of black women I don't know whether I mean, how do you see, what images do you go to, Chantel, when you think of strong Black women and you think, I want to be like her? I think of people in real life, like, you know, my mum, you know, people that are like mother figures to myself, maybe people that I work with, people that are running charities, you know, colleagues, stuff like that, people in real life. Um. Do they not come across as the the realness of them? Do they not get angry? Do they not 
do you get me? When you see these people in real life, they are rounded. They're not this to me. They're not monoliths. They're not walking strong all of the time. It's if human. we, sorry, they're human. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so, Jeff, when you look at women, do you look for a woman who is like your mother, or does the your strong black woman, as the woman you're looking for a partner? Is it all about her strength? What do men, what do black men want when they talk about the relationships and the type of women they want to be with and why? Well, I think it depends on the person, depends on their experience, depends on the background, depends on what they've been through and the kind of relationship they started with and the, 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 the environment they grew up, they grew, they grew up in. All those others elements play a decisive role in determining, determining the, the, the woman that they want to be with. For me, um, like I said, my mother was very soft. You know, she's the kind of person who was easily oppressed, you know. And um, so even though I consider her a strong woman, but the strongness was not in terms of physicality. It wasn't, it wasn't based on the fact that she was very outspoken and agile and then, you know, domineering or controlling you person. But as it is for me, the our weakness was for me was the strength was the strongness that I saw in her. But in terms of looking at the, the kind of person I want to be with and you know, spend the rest of my life with, I'm looking at someone who is very, very you not I won't say outrightly strong, you know, that physically strong and want to, you know, be controlling and not that's what I'm looking for. But I want somebody who will provide, you know, who, who complements, you know, who provides compliment to, to you as a person. And not only provides compliment, but somebody who listens to you and give you suggestions. And when you have the dialogue, you come to a compromise, you know, at some point. And then you have a collective vision to achieving things, not one person thinking this way and the other person is thinking. You have divergent views and you're, you're expecting to be together in one home and in one house. You know, so I expect somebody who would who understand the concept of love. And the concept of love, from my own understanding, is is an act that is called out of the one who loves as a result of the value that the one who loves has placed on the object of love. So I feel that when you love something, you give, you value that thing. And then when I want somebody to come into my life, the person is coming to my life with the perception of unconditionality around the concept of love. That's what I see, you know, when it comes to love. And, um, and, I, and that's what I expect in somebody. So the strength of somebody and its strongness is a willingness to be submissive to the relationship and build with me to achieving what we collectively want to achieve. I don't know if that's can, understandable. Yeah, can I just tease that out then? Because you said submissive to the relationship. Because the moment I hear the word submission, me, I just kind of bloom. Yeah. Is that, <laughs> yeah, I'm going, uh -huh. Is that submissive to the man then? Are you saying you want a woman who's submissive in this relationship for you? Submissiveness to relationship is a dual contribution. So if you, if you, it's two people coming together, so let's be submissive to one another. And one, I, one thing I know about relationship is that it should be predicated on respect. You know, many times, lots of men, they, what they look out for is not the love that you want to give them. It's not because of the food you can cook because they can buy the food outside. It's not because you can clean the house because they can get somebody to clean the house for them if they have the funding to do so. Just because you do all that, it don't mean that you love the person. Love is the respect that you provide to that person. And that person will say, you know what? I will die and kill myself for you. Let, let me tell you, if you look at this story of Megan, look at Ari when he was talking that day, you could tell that that, that man has been sold out. You know what I mean? So that I'm talking about this betrayal, no, in terms of betrayal, no. I'm talking about somebody who is committed, who has tell, told himself that I am going to die for this one. And that is the concept of love. It's about that because there's no love without dying. So it's like, okay, I'm going to die for this woman. And when I'm going to die for this woman, 
He says, I'm going to leave everything behind. I don't care what anybody's going to say, but I'm going to, this is a story here that is going to, for generations to come, people are going to talk about this story as long as they sit together. But this is a man who has given up everything that he has, gone and was squatting in somebody's house. A prince was squatting in somebody's house for some time because of his bride. That is what Jesus Christ did when he came to die for his bride. So let me check in then, because I think that's a really strong concept. Yeah, but what happened is that some people don't, there's something that's missing here. He wouldn't have done that if that woman was this arrogant, disrespectful, and domineering person. There was submissiveness, you could tell. Even when she looked at the other when she was talking, you could tell that this woman was very extremely loyal to this man. You can actually make a man do anything for you if you provide respect. So strongness should not be seen to be a disobedient, you know, non, non, um, you know, very evasive and not wanting to abide by some of those nuggets and principles that guides relationship and enables relationship to, to become blissful. But do you think the image of relationships and the man's role and the women's role has been distorted? by the image of the strong black woman and the strong black man. Do we understand relationships or are we all running to images of who we think we are? I think when you say this, Yvonne, I instantly think of like, you know, the strong independent woman that doesn't need a man, you know, that sort. Yeah. And it was something that we were discussing the other day, weren't we? Um, mm -hmm. And was it, someone said it was repulsive like, was it you? Did you say, was it you, Jeff? That is, yeah, yeah. Like, that's, that's yeah. Really I thought that's a really strong word. You're projecting repulsive behavior because if you talk about a strong woman, you talk about a, a woman who, if you talk about, okay, now look, you know, I feel, I feel that, that retaining a man. Retaining a man does not require you to be a strong woman. Okay, let me, so let me, Chantel. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me say, let me finish. You don't need to be a strong woman and I'll quote the strongness. Mm. Now, when you have two men, if you have two men in the house, give them this thing, this house and you guys, are, you guys, two of you own this house. They will fight for ownership. They will hide, fight for dominance. Every institution has a head. Every institution, there's no institution in this world that does not have a head. The government, your office, everywhere has a head. And then you tell me that the home does not need a head. Let me tell you, if a man does not become the head, the woman will be, somebody has to be the head. And what's wrong and with the woman home, being the head? And if you look at homes, where the man refuses to take responsibilities, the woman becomes the head of the home. Okay, then. So we're talking about respecting each other here in a relationship now. So if the woman being the head of the home, if that's what you want to call it, and that suits her fine, and she does that, does that very well, then would, would the man not respect that? Would that be wrong for the man to submit to the woman to be the head? Are you asking me that? Yeah. Okay, cool. Now, the truth of the matter is, is that if a man takes an inferior position in the home and decides to be the housekeeper and they can take on the woman's role, the, or, you know, normally the domestic related woman, that I'm not saying that you want to be domestic related all the time, no, but decide to become housekeeper and the, the woman goes to work and she does it, bring the income, then the woman could be the head of the home. Because I uh, think that a man, you should work hard. You should work hard to provide for your home. You should do everything possible to provide for your home. You should not allow your the woman to take responsibilities. If there are times where you can have financial problems, and if the woman is financially stronger, she supports you. But your primary determination is to ensure that there is provision by you in the home. So and you're if saying you are temporarily, if you're, even if you're temporarily down. You should be working towards, and that woman, that's why a woman should be, be 
to support you. When you're temporarily down, he should work hard to be provision, provisional to that home. And you still see the relationship. You see, you, the words you're using is temporarily down. So it's almost like it makes it okay to be in the house temporarily because the, the, the implication is there's going to be a shift again where you, he, will ret he will then command the financial position and then yeah. the roles will return again. But it should. No, no, now, even with that, I'm not saying that, that temporary there should also be a shift in authority. That's what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that in every, in every institution, marriage, marriage or relationship is an institution. And if we don't treat it as that, then we leave that relationship or whatever to, 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 to crumble. That's the truth. Because there is a concept in this world. There is a concept. Every country has a leader. Every leader has constituents that they govern. And every constituent has a leader where they govern people. You understand? Down and down to different institutions to work, they have a leader. Then you're telling me that the home that is supposed to be the fundamentals of the society should not have somebody at the head. Let me tell you something. It's not about that though, Jeff, because what I'm looking at is I can get that you say, Right, okay then. So let's take this analogy that you've got that it's leadership and there is a head. But I think that can be determined by who best fits the position and that there are multiple positions in the household. So if the man is the hunter gatherer and he's going out and earning money, I think that's fine if they have agreed that and she chooses. But mm -hmm. I also think if she chooses and it works for them, this relationships is flux and fluid that who earns doesn't determine who leads because as you said if it's a relationship based on mutual respect then all of the roles are fluid depending on the situation that the couple find themselves in rather than he Okay. is financially capable and therefore takes the head temporarily can step back but once he's good again he takes the lead i'm thinking if it came to money no, no, no. and he was the lead or best in that great but if he wasn't she could take it so what i'm saying is what what you're arguing are historical roles and that uh, and we can ch we can challenge those but for me, I've seen these historical roles where the man is the head of the household and he, it's been abused. We've got women stepping up out of necessity. So there is a strength born out of that. What I'm looking at is in relationships where there is abuse, how does a woman challenge that? if she wants to remain strong, equal, or challenge the way things are seen. Because even as I'm speaking now, I'm conscious of the notion that, yeah, a man can be more physically powerful <laughs> and abuse. And, and so how do you get guys to navigate a, a different okay. way of functioning? I'll, I'll tell you something, you see. The world that we live in, money is very powerful. Money, you can't understand the power of money. We're talking here because we're doing things right now because money has gone into what we're doing. That's why. People who run this world are people who have the money because money is influential. Money is powerful. You know, but I'm not saying that money should determine love in relationship morning does it determine ship either no, it should, it should definitely be. not um and like we were saying before sorry jeff i just wanted to cut in like you were saying before like is a woman classified as strong because she's made it within society so looking at that financial success you know a social status and stuff like that does that make her strong that's exactly what i'm talking about that money is powerful that if society sees you as strong, determined if you're rich as a woman, but they don't see that woman who goes by the streets, try to hawk 
or sell something on the roadside as a strong woman, even though she provides for her home. Because well, then we money, then become victims, don't we then? But I'm going to come back to your question about domestic violence and stuff like that, you know. Um, so we've got a question in the chat box here. Okay. okay. So we've got, is it damaging to see women as the primary caregivers in society? I think that's a good question. Yeah. You can answer that question? Yeah, we can all. We can all float about with it. Um, yeah. Go Chantel. So I think I want to touch a bit on, you know, when you're talking about, obviously, looking at generations and stuff and, you know, back when, and it's still carrying on now, we are the primary caregivers, aren't we? Um, we're noticing more now, or maybe we noticed back then, but didn't really say anything or didn't have a foot to say anything about it. But I know it's that people are, you know, noticing more now that we're much more than the primary caregiver. There's, you know, different things. You've got paternity leave and stuff like that. That means that the man can be a caregiver as well, although it's not, you know, equal or whatever. You've got stuff like that. And then you've also got people that are, you know, going out and getting jobs. We're getting that social status and stuff. So we're noticing more as the generations go by that there's more to us than being that mother is we're recognizing it but are we implementing it but I think it's hard to implement when we're still raised to go exactly. into the home afterwards so for me to answer that question it is when we are only seen as primary caregivers when you raise women to think that everything that we do leads to the point where we're going to take care and a man's primary role is to go out. I don't think things will change. And especially when you look at the two roles and the status and the money is given to those who can go out and work. If I stayed at home and could generate the same kind of income as a man who goes out to work, would I have the same respect? Would I have the same mm -hmm. authority? Would I be able to manage? I've worked professionally as a woman. And I know that when I step back as a mother, my status when I talked to other people was diminished because the question they always asked was, what do you do for a living? And I was a mother, a caregiver. And the moment you say that, the conversations change because what they're looking at is my ability to connect, to influence and earn. And I had no value in those conversation sp uh, spaces, yet my intelligence was diminished, although technically there was nothing happening to my brain. I was just raising a child. So society and our status is determined by the jobs that we hold and by how we're perceived. And I think until the value is put in terms, because you talk about institutions, if the home is the birthplace of all types of institutions, then surely a woman's role should be valued in that, should be paid mm -hmm. because you lose your financial freedom. So I have to attach myself and I am dependent on somebody somebody's mercy because if that guy isn't good to me whilst I've got a child and cannot leverage I'm at a disadvantage so for me the relationships that I have with men are managed because I am aware of my gender as a woman but also the expectations that are put on me and Jeff, when I look for partners or a partner, it had to be a guy who was critically aware of the inequalities of my role as a woman and be able to step up and around it so that I could manoeuvre equally. And I don't know if we've got women and guys starting to really flex in terms of relationships to that degree. Does that answer the question for the person who asked it? I don't know if it does. <clears throat> but, um... Did you want to answer that as well, Jo? Hmm. 
to see if it's damaging to see women as primary caregivers in society today? I don't think so. You I don't, don't think, so. I think I think women have inherent ability and intuition to, to care. If they care for their kids, they care for their husbands. You, 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 I'm not saying that a man cannot do some of those things, but the reason why women are like that, because first of all, they had to go through nine months of giving birth to kids, and they really, somehow, because of that, you know, um, reality, they provide care, you know, inadvertently to people. And because if they, they learned it from taking care of their kids, they then extend it to other members of the society and um, and even to their husbands and all, all their partners or you know, boyfriends and all that. And it yeah. shouldn't diminish. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. I'm sorry, I jumped in and you're saying it shouldn't diminish. Yeah. It shouldn't diminish their ability to be strong participants of society. It shouldn't diminish the, their social mobility because they because they do all that. But, but women earn less. Be, we earn right. less when Sorry? we do that. We but we earn less when we do that. So when women go into the workplace, that's that's, that's why that's why that's why if you have somebody that they, they have to, you, you have to work hard to compliment because you earn less because you don't have the, the time to go out because you're caring for the children, you're caring for the home. Then a man has to work very hard to be able to provide to compliment for those aspects that you cannot do. But I'm also saying, and I think the question still goes around, because in some ways you you can shoot yourself in the foot, because as long as we see caring as a woman's role because she biologically gave birth, I think it does a disservice to the the ability, the emotional ability of men, because it's almost like saying because men don't feel as much, don't care or can't or don't have the capacity how men respond is learned and we've done a good job of teaching men to subdue how they feel but, 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 but it's the truth you you give it to a child and you have to breastfeed the child all the time you have to look after the child you, you mean, i'm not saying listen, so this is the... just inherent in women it's just inherent in the so woman what about that mother that, that doesn't breastfeed the man can learn the process a man will learn the process all men learn the process in a way. Do, don't we learn the process? Sometimes women just do this naturally, but we have to learn the process. Not all women do do it naturally. What about that mum that doesn't want to or cannot breastfeed their child? 80% what? of women do that though. Some women learn, some women learn, but we know that most women do that. We've got another question. Um, okay. So this is... You might want to answer this, Jeff, actually, first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jeff, get ready. If men were the primary caregivers, would society look different? Yes. And the reason why it would it be different is because they wouldn't have the time to go out and work hard provide for the home while the woman nine months of this woman this woman will be carrying nine months she would have a baby she would have carry you know give birth and she would you know carry up carry you know she's pregnant for nine months and then after nine months she says to have to be at home stay at home to you know do other things and before she go back to work and then what happens if the woman the man becomes the primary giver she's supposed to be resting and the man's supposed to be working at the provide for the home so this is my thing then after mom's had baby, done maternity leave, gone back to work. She's now a mum and she's an employee, yeah? The man can go out, he can raise, um, earn a living, provide what, what other roles he's got, friend, whatnot. Apart from being the mum and being the partner and the employee, she's not got time as well, because that's what you just said. Where does he get time to do to um, provide for the family. Mum doesn't have time. She's provide, she's the primary caregiver and she's working as well. 
how are you how do you how do you become more than a mother are you talking to me? to you did i ask yeah. that right was that yeah yeah, yeah because yeah. Cause cause you, yeah but jeff because what you're saying is and, and correct me if i'm wrong you sat there and then you said how would he <laughs> find time to work and Chantel's answer is the same way the woman has to find time to work and be a caregiver. And what we demonstrated was the way you've been raised by society is very singular. So your focus is on, I can't be a caregiver because I'm a man and I've got to go out to work. And yet when a woman no, not, has a child, not, no, I'm, what I'm saying is, no, I'm, I'm, as the, 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 as are, a, the are, are men, who have lost their wives and they have to actually care for their kids. I know I have a friend who doesn't have his wife here and he brought his children from, from, from Cameroon and he's having to look after them. He doesn't have the time anymore. He used to work, he used to go out, work hard very well, but now he doesn't have the time because the wife is not here and he has to look after twins. Do you understand? And you're asking what, the, what would that impact? What would that, how would that impact on society? Let my society just... Just hold him. You have, to understand, you have to understand that when you come and talk to society, you're not talking about just a microcosm of society of somebody who is just at home. You're talking about the impact on society, the, 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 the domino effect is going to have on the broader society. For example, that guy who does not have a job, for example, he's, he goes away. For example, if, let's say he has a company. And suddenly, he brought, you know, he's having to speak of this case. He has a company that has about 20 staffs, right? That company my fold. Okay, because Jeff. No, I can't sit here politely because I'm sat on my hands. <laughs> oh, I'm just thinking, well, don't women have children run company more than 20 staff? Listen. More than 20 hold down international. And the way you're saying it is like this poor man. Right. Society will fold if I have to do, and I'm thinking, <laughs> no, Jeff, do as we do, which is juggle and you're right it, it's it, crazy it is, not, hard. It's not, it is not easy for that woman because you might you, you might see her as you know somebody as, well, as, as, as accomplished you see her on television you say oh she's done so much but at the beginning she might have had support it's not just easy oh no lots of, it's yeah. lots of support for her to be able to have the time to do that, some of the house house have, some of them have husbands who have to stay back and become responsible for those kids. Do you understand what I'm saying? But we're talking about if they become primary caregivers, if, they, if, if, if these men become primary caregivers, then how would that impact on society? It would have significant impact on society. It would. It would be great, wouldn't it? Because then yeah. things would have to change, wouldn't <laughs> exactly, they? Exactly, exactly. Things would have to change because yeah, Jeff, you're going about. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it, it could be a good impact, but yeah, right. not a bad thing. We live in a world. We live in a world, right? We live in a world. Sorry to say, we live in a man dominated world at the moment. Do you understand? Just imagine that all these men become caregivers. Right? Where would this world be today? Oh, God forbid. I know. God forbid. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, that's the reality of life. Yeah, oh, the, no, the, not reality. That is the way things are at the moment. That is the way we've structured up yeah. based on a patriarchal system. That mm. doesn't mean it has to be that way or is for... Uh, and just because we don't look at different models of society don't make this one okay or right. I'm asking that we reframe the roles and this notion that if men aren't leading, everything collapses. In the in this last lockdown, how many different women have we seen who have been prime ministers of countries, have made different decisions, but still can be prime ministers and mothers? What's this comment here? Okay, research has suggested women make better leaders, so maybe with the roles reverse, situations may be better. What's your take on this? So... I'm not disagreeing with the fact that there are lots of great women out there who are, lead, who, are who are holding very strong leadership positions and who are doing extremely well. I'm not undermining the capacities of women. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not understanding because, because this this discussion has 
you know, varied from relationships to domestic activities, engagement, love, now to politics, and looking at how the, you know, uh, women dominance, dominance can lead to the change. Now, you know, you, if you, you have to look at, you have to look at some of these things that we struggle with, that we fight for. They might have positive outlook in, in terms of the facade. It might look so great. Oh, the women have emancipation. But once we look at the impact on society, the impact on kids, the impact on longevity, longevity in terms of marriage and stuff like that, you know, I think even as much as we try to really push for this, it is becoming disproportionately affecting society and marriage and everything. No, I think that's men. I, I'm just, no, 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 uh, no. D Jeff? Because I mean, when you argue you that, yeah, here's my <laughs> one, my poor one last run. <laughs> men run the majority and just when women are in the ascension and on our way up you cannot turn around and blame the woes of society on the few women who've made it it's not on you can't hold the reins and then complain about the way the horse is running but let me go back to this if we're going to look at perceptions of because women what you, guys, or what you guys are arguing for is women dominance and let me take back the, the back seat that is, that is what not what mean? we're arguing. No, that is not what we're equality, arguing. What? Equality, right? And is equality which, a bad which, thing? Which, no. Which is, which is great. There's nothing wrong in equality. But, but we, have to, we, have to, we, see, we, we also need to face the reality on ground. The reality on ground, do you think that men are actually deliberately undermining the aspirations of women? Is that what At you're saying? At this moment in time, yes. The no, system think, that we live in, whether you want to say it's deliberate or has evolved, does not favor women. Live, and so I that's live, why live, we're live, saying, Jeff, in, at the end of the day, if we maybe, want maybe change. In places, maybe in places like Africa, where I come from, where women are made to have sex with men, you know, to ascend or get jobs and stuff like that. But here in England, I think any woman who wants to achieve can achieve. If you want to become prime minister, you can become prime minister. But is that a reality? Why are women? Is that a reality? I mean, how many? Is that a reality? Is that a reality? How many women are actually going out there, becoming mechanics, becoming becoming um, joiners, doing those extreme jobs, and really working hard? You, you can't blame men for all this. You can actually go on to achieve these things, and not always blame men for the ambitions and the and the re, and, and the reluctance of women not you know achieve, wanting to achieve or their reluctance and aspirations no you cannot do that i don't think what i'm trying to do is to blame men mm -hmm. what we're trying to do is to raise awareness of the inequalities based on a way of thinking that does not serve it serves men predominantly and anyone who can strive in the current environment patriarchal environment will make it what we're saying yeah. is change the dialogue so that it truly is equal because what i tend to find is women won't go into certain professions because it can be more hostile. It can be difficult to achieve. It is male dominated. And therefore, even those I, who I mean, get I mean, there, yeah. even those who get there still aren't paid the same, still aren't allowed the same positions. We hear of, you know, going into boardrooms and still finding if one woman in a position of seniority we find women who are capable but have children have to step back or no longer considered because the way the boardroom functions doesn't allow a woman with a child to be able to run at the same pace you're right if you have a child you have to step back but I say if the system supported me with child whether I had a husband or not to run equal to men knowing the child was being looked after aren't I a better employee 
rather than to have to recruit again because I can't step forward. And in its in um, what I'm saying, Jeff, then is it's a respect for my ability to be as good as a man and my function as a woman if I choose to have children that shouldn't diminish my role in the boardroom. And I think See. that what you're asking for is to respect the position that women have in terms of perspectives that we have been taught by biology and by society. So women can be leaders, but that doesn't mean that we are leaders because we are softer. We lead because we are good at the job. There are lots of great women who are very good at the job, their jobs. A lot of them. You're leading is not just in your job, you can lead in your community, you can lead out. You can lead your community, you can lead yeah, everywhere. Just in, lots of in your job. Can, and we, are, we are doing extremely very, very, very well. And, um, you know, and I feel that, you know, we had a British Prime Minister that was very popular and then we had that now one that was um, very unpopular so you know um so it doesn't um there's no limitation when it comes to aspiration i agree with that reality. There's, some, there's some reality about can make up that's, 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 that's some biological makeup also has influence on the kind of job that you can do and and it's also it's also down it's not just only the kind of job you can do it's also in terms in terms of domestic activities as well there's some things that a woman cannot do that a man can do give you me know, for instance <laughs> after sometimes, you give you um and sometimes you give you... <laughs> some of, some of the things that a man can do well some of them can be very risky so they get they get, get paid higher which is the truth for example how many how many women do you see on the front line in in in, in the battlefield how many? Okay, one second. I'm just okay. yeah, running out of time. Right, hang on. Listen, Jeff, we're running out of time. Jeff, a couple of questions. Jeff, we've got a couple of questions. <laughs> Listen to the strong women. Women, happy to hold you. Shush. Somebody said the, 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 the pornographic images on. All the naked women in mechanics garages put people up. So that's well, that's what I'm talking about. This, yeah, when you create an environment that's hostile to women, why would you want to work there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you no, have no. to be. Just, you have to be like the those, guys. Those are, those, are, those are things that can be, you know, completely policies that can come about that can stop all that. Yeah, but we've got two more questions. Yeah. Right. Okay, I'm going to stop. Let the two more questions come, come in. Come on, Jeff. Okay. Jeff, let the two questions so. come through. We've got two questions here because we're going to have to wrap up soon. We maybe need about five hours for this discussion because we're just getting warmed up. But if a woman has an innate role as a mother, then why do some women choose not to have children or harm or neglect or kill their children? Doesn't this suggest that it's not innate? Innate. Eternal. These are, minor, these are extreme minorities. You, you can't use that as a basis to judge the reality of things. That, those are extreme minorities, man. <laughs> like, I mean, I mean, I mean that you hear all that, then compare that to the number of people who give birth to the child, who celebrate their kids all the time and look after their kids and flaunt their children, even with their, their, their stomach and everything. And it, you know, listen, a woman, many women pride in having kids. And um, many women choose not, not to have to. children. And so why is that it that... With, uh, sorry. Go on, Chantel, go on. I was just going to say, and I think that goes with the whole putting that label and that pressure on a woman that she has to be maternal. So when there's a woman that says, no, don't want children, it's like you, you find it like really shocking. How can, how can that be so true? <laughs> there's and, like that, there's women like that. Don't want children, and there may well, be more imagine. if it wasn't seen as such as if it wasn't stigmatized exactly. to be a woman who does not want children. Maybe exactly. more women would opt not to have them when it is seen as our primary role. We go into it without really thinking or knowing. You have a choice: is this what I actually want to do? And for most of us who end up being mothers the role of a mother and the realities are two different things so you can romanticize the role of being a mother but actually 
it takes a lot of the same skills that we could use in the boardroom. Never mind the boardroom, any room where we'll teach women to make money for themselves so that they are independent. And that's not because we don't need a man, but it's about saying, when I come into this relationship with you, I stand equal financially, politically, or economically, so that we don't worry about who steps back in the relationship to look after the kids because we're both fine with it. Thank you. We've got one more question and then we're going to have to tie it up. So do you think some men are intimidated by successful or strong women? I think... No, we're not asking you. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not asking you again. I'm going to start with Chantel, and you can sit there and listen now. All of a sudden, my strong black woman's come out now. You see what you've done? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Right, Chantel. You know what? Um, I think I think it's a bit of both. I think some men can feel intimidated by that. Um, a strong woman or a successful woman because they do see women as having a place um, whereas like Jeff was saying before it depends how you see strong so how he portrayed his mother as strong that's not something that would intimidate him so I think it, it does it does it's what do you think sorry what do you think is a strong woman okay if it intimidates a person, I think anybody who gets intimidated by a woman who is successful is a lazy man. You should work hard, you understand? And because when you work hard, right, and she works hard, because she worked hard to make her money. So what stops you from working hard to make your money and or become successful? And it makes life easy in the home. It makes things easy because you can provide for your kids, you know, give them all the luxury they want. You know, it should be intimidating for you. So anyone who feels that way is somebody who is too unwilling to work hard. Let me tell you, I'm not going to talk about working hard. I'm talking about achieving and getting this high paying job. You know, I see that man on the street that pushes that truck. You understand? Somebody will go and put that um, scaffolding on. I see that person as a hard working person. It might not reflect in cash. It might not reflect in wealth. But that is a hard working man. And it should be quantified in financial terms. You understand what I'm saying? So if if you find somebody who is very wealthy or successful, as long as you, even though you're not as rich as this person, because no matter what, in this life is not equal. We're not going to be all, you know, we can't be all rich. We can't be all as successful as each other. So what we need to do, do your bit as a man to work hard and let the woman know you're working. Because if you don't, that woman will match you, she will match you, man. You see, and so the strong black woman, she comes back, she ends up mashing your toes. Oh yeah. my lord. Well, shed some light on this as well. We've got a couple of minutes before then we cut out. Strong okay. black woman. For me, the the term is outdated. And it is because I go beyond beyond our relationships because I think they need challenging. But for me, mental ill health trying to be something that I wasn't meant that I had to def- redefine for myself what I thought it meant to be strong. And so when I find people categorizing me, that is where my strength is, is to say yay if it suits or nay if it doesn't and finding ways that reflect who I am and hoping that in doing so it gives other women and men older or younger an opportunity to see a different definition of black women so it's just about for me challenging the status quo as it stands because I think that kind of narrative is outdated for me and I want different yeah. Um, so before we cut out, I don't know how this will end, but we're coming to the end of the show. Thank you everyone for attending. Thank yeah. you for your questions and your comments. We really appreciate it. 
Um, I've just put our email address in the chat box. So if there's anything that you want to discuss further, yeah. um, if you need any support with anything after the discussion of today's show, please feel free to send an email to speakeasy at the bha.org.uk. And if you've got any suggestions for any future shows as well, please put them in an email to us. So thank you for joining us and have a good evening. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye.